Hello mga kablitz at mga kakugmo. Today is gonna be a brand new day and let's talk about pediatric nursing. This is gonna be the first episode of my tutorial here in my channel. So today we'll focus more on the core concepts of growth and development. So when I say core concept, it means that you focus more on the most important topics or the most important concept regarding this uh, specific subject on pediatric nursing. But before that, let us have this first. Okay, so today we'll talk about uh, pediatric nursing, but before that, hello, I am Joseph Bahian Abang, and I am here because teaching is my passion. You can find me at my Facebook account, my Twitter, and of course my Instagram account, but of course here in this channel, Joseph Bahian Abang. Please do subscribe and click the notification button for you to be notified for my succeeding videos in the future. Okay, let's begin. Let's start now the core definitions of uh, pediatric nursing. So let's talk about growth and development. So when we say growth and development, these two terms are basically different in meaning. So when you say growth, it's defined as a complex phenomenon of structure or a whole. And when we say growth, we talk about the physical structure of a child or an individual, and that can be measured quantitatively. So again, when we say growth, that's physical structure, or there is complexity of the physical structure from small to complex because there is an increasing in its physical size. On the other hand, development is said to be defined as increase in the skills or capacity to function. So basically, this development is defined as, can, or it can be measured qualitatively. So it depends on the capacity of the person to function. So just remember, when you say growth, you talk about the physical structure. You, that's anything that you can see that's growth and we see development anything that is beyond what you can see or what is uh, kick the capacity of the person to function so just remember growth is physical structure then development is the capacity to function what are the growth parameters so there are basically two parameters of growth and of course the first one is weight so when I say weight it is the most sensitive measurement of param of growth it's because uh, it can be measured easily and it can actually be seen uh, physically by, by by a nurse assessing the assessment so when we take into consideration uh, weight as a most sensitive measurement it will be very important for us to take into consideration what is the weight gain of our infants in the first year of life so uh, it is actually stated in statistics and of course the standard that the weight of a child doubles or times two in five to six months so it's expected that uh, the weight of your child it's gonna be uh, multiplied by two after five to six months and it is gonna be tripled uh, in one year and it is gonna be quadrupled or times four in two to two and a half years. So therefore, multiplied by two in six months, multiplied by three in one year, and multiplied by four in two and two and a half years. So times two times three times four. That's actually gonna be our weight as an indicator of growth. Our second parameter is height. So it is actually stated that the cost of increase in height for females are the hormones estrogen. So, and for, for males, the hormone is specifically, uh, the reason why there is an increase in height is the that testosterone. So just remember, estrogen for females and testosterone for males. And of course, it is actually said that the height of a person will usually stop when there is going to be an eruption of our wisdom tooth already. So uh, it is actually our uh, belief that when you are going to have your wisdom tooth already erupted wisdom tooth, your height will stop anymore. And it is actually expected that there is going to be an increase in height of uh, an infant for the first six months of life for one inch per month. So therefore, it's expected po na merong, merong one inch per month na increase ng height ng isang bata. And then pagdating po niya ng 7 to 12 months, meron na lang po siyang half inch increase 
per month. So just remember, one inch per month for the first six months, and then for the last two, six months in life for infancy, it's gonna be half inch per month only. Okay, and it is also expected that when there is gonna be uh, parameters for for growth, there is going to be an increase in height for a child. So the height of a child or the height of an infant will have a 50% increase in one year. So in one year, it is expected na meron pong pag increase ng 50% ng height ng isang bata. And of course, when we compare the height between males and females, at the age of 9 years old, meron pong magkaparehang height yung isang babae at isang, isang lalaki. And then, <clears throat> 12 years old naman, males has a uh, lesser height compared to females. And then when that child reaches 13 years old, height for, height for males increases compared to males. So males are shorter than females at the age of 12, and then males are taller than females at the age of 13 years old. Let's now have development. How are we going to measure development? So it is actually stated that when we want to measure development, it's stated earlier that development is, is measured through qualitative measurements. So this is just an observation of what the child is capable of doing by performing a very simple task. And at the same time, it is also going to be important for us to take into consideration the description of the parents who notes the progress of their own child. That's how we measure development. And we have two specific screening tools in order for us to screen the development of a child. And when we take into consideration the universal tool, we'll be using our Denver Developmental Screening Tests. This is going to be uh, identifying a specific structure or specific capacity of a child that he or she is capable of. And when we talked about the Philippine-based tool, we will be talking about uh, the Metromineal Development Screen, Developmental Screening Test or the MMDST. So this Metromineal Developmental Screening Test is actually developed here in the Philippines because this is used in order to evaluate the development of a developing child. So when we talk about uh, the Denver Developmental Screening Test, that is the universal tool that is used worldwide. Just remember, Denver Developmental Tests is for the universal screening tool and in matrimonial development screening test is the philippine based tool in order for us to screen the development of a child and there are four main rated categories of the denver developmental screening test and let's talk about language so when take it when take into consideration language it's very important for us to remember that a child is seen to be well developed especially if there is gonna be a systematic development of language and at the same time when we talk about personal and social category we talk about the capacity of the child to relate with others and at the same time when we talk about fine motor skills or fine motor adaptive skills the child is capable of using their fine motor fine mo fine muscles in order to perf perform their expected uh, roles in a day and at the same time when you talk about gross motor skills they're capable of using their large muscles at the same time that's gotta be an indicator that the child is actually developing properly according to age when we say maturation it's actually uh, the same as with development so when we say development it as what I mentioned earlier that's actually the capacity of a person to function and that's why maturation is synonymous with development and then when you say maturation also it's defined as our readiness to learn and at the same time readiness to learn from our experience and learning is effortless because that occurs uh, voluntarily and consciously and of course it will be very important for us to remember that when we take into consideration cognitive development as what is also stated in one of the theories that we will be discussing very soon uh, cognitive development is the ability to learn and understand from experiences so therefore it will be very important for the child to learn from the experience that they've had before and at the same time cognitive development is the ability to acquire and retain knowledge so when you say acquire it means that from the experiences that the child has had or that child has been through uh, he will be able to acquire new knowledge from it and of course retain from it and of course there will be a change in its behavior and then uh, last is the ability to respond to a new situation and to solve problems so it is stated that a child learns to respond to new situations because he actually learned something from the previous experiences that he or she has and of course, when we said cognitive development, it will be very important for us to remember that 
there is always going to be uh, learning. And of course, when we say learning, it is actually stated that learning is actually uh, measurable because there is going to be a change in its behavior. So as far as what I have mentioned before, that uh, the best method of assessing learning is going to be a change in behavior or there is a change in psychomotor skills. So of course, learning is actually uh, measured through our intelligent quotient. And of course, our intelligent intelligence quotient is going to be computed with uh, the formula mental age divided by, by the chronological age times 100. And if you will have an IQ level of 90 to 110, it means that you have a normal IQ. But of course, if you have more than 130 uh, IQ level, you are expected to be uh, to be a gifted child. And if your IQ level is more than 140, then you are going to be uh, labeled as genius so now let's talk about the basic definition or the basic division of life so there are actually five major divisions of life especially when you talk about the childhood so it starts with prenatal so you see prenatal it means that you begin with your conception until birth and it will be followed by infancy from the first 28 days and then that's the first infancy neonatal infancy and of course when you talk about the formal infancy of course that's that begins with uh, the 29th day until one year old. And after infancy, it will be followed by early childhood that is gonna be uh, for toddler. And for toddlerhood, uh, that's gonna have an age of one to three years old. And for preschool, four to six years old. And of course, it will be followed by the middle age or the middle childhood. And that's gonna be school age of seven to 12 years old. And of course, uh, last division of life is uh, the pre-adolescent that's 11 to 13 years old and of course if you take into consideration the adolescent period that ranges from 12 years old to 21 or 13 years old to 21 years old so that's the five basic division of life okay so now let's talk about the principles of growth and development so there are basically four principles of growth and development the first principle is continuous process so when you continuous process it means that there is a systematic way of life there is it will actually going to be the begin from womb to, womb to tomb so from birth until the end of life and of course the second principle is not all parts grows at the same time so we see not all parts grows at the same time it means that there is a specific period of time that this part grows and develop it's because uh, it allows time to that specific part to mature and then the third principle is each child is unique so when you say each child is unique, it means that every individual has its uniqueness and differences because we are composed of different uh, blueprint or the different blueprint of life, which is the DNA. So we are considered to be a unique individual. And the fourth principle is it occurs in regular and predictable patterns. So when you say occurs in regular and predictable patterns, means, it means that uh, it is predicted that it will be developed at the age of this year. Uh, at this year, it is expected that this will be developed, but not all of us will have the same development because some are experiencing delayed in its growth and development. It is also expected for us to discuss about the directional patterns of growth and development. So when you say directional patterns of growth and development, it means that we talk about the direction of the development. So the first direction is cephalocaudal. So of course, I believe that all of us know knows this one. Uh, cephalocaudal means head to toe. So that's how we assess a person from head to toe. So from, from the head part until uh, the toe part. And then the second uh, directional pattern of growth and development is proximal distal or from the center towards the periphery. So the development is central, we we'll talk about the uh, visceral organs and of course after that we'll talk about the extremities to be developed. And then the third directional pattern is, is symmetrical. So when it's symmetrical it means to say that if there's a growth of your right part, of course there will also be growth of the left part so this is symmetrical that's going to be side by side or side to side then lastly it's going to be mass or it's uh, going to have a development from specific to uh, more complex or from simple to complex development or, or direction of development we also have sequential trends of growth and development so when you see sequential trends it means that it is uh, going to focus more on its uh, sequence. So the first sequence is it involves predictable sequence. With predictable sequence, it means that you begins with, of course, there there's going to be a three three sequential trends: locomotion, language, and social skills. So we see locomotion means that the child learns how to crips. After that, the child learns how to stand, 
and of course to walk and enter run. That's gonna be sequential growth and development. And when we say language, it means to say that the child learns to cry first for us to for 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 the child to seek for attention, and then after that learns to coo, and then learns to. Uh, verbalize a word that's going to be the sequential development of a child and then for for social skills the child learns to uh, use his muscles first the the, the, the gross motor skills and of course uh, it progresses towards the development of the fine motor skills and we also have secular trends of growth and development so when we say secular trends of growth and development it means to say that uh, nowadays uh, ch children mature earlier uh, compared before and children grows larger compared before it's because of the trends of the generation so it will be very important for us to remember that uh, it's gonna be the trend now that children are maturing earlier and growing larger is because of of course I think this that will be uh, because of the environmental factors also okay so it will also be very important for us to remember that when we talk about growth and development we take into consideration behavior so we say behavior that's the most comprehensive indicator of development is because uh, it will be very important for us to act at our age so when you say act at our age it means that if you are 15 years old you act your you act as an adolescent if you are uh, nine years old you act as a school age and if you are uh, three years old you act as a toddler it's not that you are already 15 years old but you are acting as a, as a toddler or as, as a preschooler it's because it will be very important that our behavior is a reflection of our age next let's talk about play uh, for children it's gonna be uh, their universal language is because through play they can express what they feel through play they can express what they want to and of course play is going to be considered as a great deal of skills is learned through practice so in short when a child is playing something they will be learning something out of it because they are doing this uh, daily of course they that's actually going to be uh, learning through practice and that's going to be through play and of course it is also stated that play is uh, giving optimum time for initiation of experience of learning so when we are giving uh, the, the optimum time of a child to develop they are being given an optimum time for them to experience learning okay so when we talk about neonatal uh, reflexes it is expected of, of a child to have this neonatal like, reflexes it's because that's actually be uh, expected to develop uh, from from after the delivery and of course uh, it is going to be important for this neonatal reflexes to 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 be lost first before development can proceed and of course if there is going to be persistent primitive reflexes that is present up until uh, a year old a year old that's going to be an indicator that this child is is actually going to be at risk of having cerebral palsy Okay, let's now have the patterns of growth and development. So when you see patterns of growth and development, of course, you begin with the development of the renal system. It will be followed by the digestive system, the circulatory, and of course, lastly, is the musculoskeletal system. Of course, that is going to be reached at the age of childhood. And of course, for the brain, uh, you start with the brain, and of course, the CNS. And it is expected that there will be a rapid growth, the rapid growth of the CNS uh, in the, the first two years of life. And the brain's adult proportion reaches its uh, adult proportion at the age of five years old. And of course, uh, if there will then be uh, instances that malnutrition is actually present, that might be an indicator or that might be a risk factor for the development of m mental retardation. And at the same time, it will also be very important for us to remember that the lymphatics are very significant because uh, the nodes are going to grow rapidly at the first year of life until childhood. It's because it is needed in order to fight for possible infection. And of course, that will provide for the immune system function of the child. And the tonsils are actually going to be part of the immune system and it will it will reach its tonsil proportion, tonsil adolescent, adolescent proportion at the age of five years old. And for the reproductive system, it is expected that this reproductive system is going to grow during puberty. 
And of course, when you see patterns of early development, it talks about fetal and infancy. Uh, at this period, fetal and infancy, this is the time that there is most rapid growth and development. And of course, this child is actually at risk for the development of anemia. It's because of probably that's nutrition related. And of course, when you see toddler, you talk about slow growth and development. And of course, there's going to be a growth gap. gap and the development here is going to be slow. And when the child reaches toddler and preschool, there will be an alternate rapid and slow growth and development. So this period is going to be at a time or in preschool period is uh, having problems with uh, slow growth and development. So just remember, fetal and infancy is a time where in a, the child experiences most rapid growth. But of course, the problem then is the child is going to be at risk for the development of anemia. And then for school age, of course, it progresses from the uh, from the preschool that there will be slow growth and development but of course during the school age there will be lesser chances of the child to develop anemia and when we say adolescent uh, it's, it's actually be the same with your infancy wherein rapid growth and development is actually present at the same time this is the time wherein the child or the adolescent is, is prone to the development of anemia also because of probably uh, they are concerned with, with uh, nutrition and of course nutrition is going to be a factor for the development of uh, anemia. Okay, so there are two basic factors affecting growth and development. Of course, it's heredity and environment. So let's talk about heredity first. So when we talk about heredity, that talk about that, that talk about race. Uh, what race are you? Are you an Asian? Are you an African? Are you an American white, uh, black? And then of course, when you say sex, of course, uh, that's going to be a factor for growth and development. So what I mentioned earlier. Uh, there is going to be a difference for for growth and development for men men and women and this intelligence also that's going to be a factor for growth and development because this actually stated that uh, our intelligence is going to be 60 to 80 percent coming from our mother so therefore it, it will be very important for us to remember that uh, our intelligence that does that define us but intelligence is going to be uh, a learned behavior and then nationality is also going to be a factor for the development for growth and development it's because we talk about filipino uh, are you Singaporean, Indonesian, or whatsoever. And then second factor is environment. So the, the first factor there is quality of nutrition. So the nutrition really greatly affects our growth and development because if we are properly nourished, it means to say that we have less problem than socioeconomic status. It means to say that we focus more on the capacity of our family to provide us. And then health, especially if you are sickly or not. And in ordinal position in the family, it means to say that if you are the eldest, what is actually expected of you? And then if you are going to be the youngest member of the family, what is expected? of you to do because it's going to be uh, reflecting your growth and development and lastly is parent-child relationship that re that greatly affects the development because some children usually will isolate themselves especially if there is going to be a problem with parent and child relationship and let's talk about now the universal principles of growth and development so it is stated here that females are born with less weight than males by one ounce so it means to say that uh, males are actually uh, having bigger weight compared to females upon birth and females are born shorter height than males by one inch so just remember females are gonna be thinner at the same time shorter so males are actually bigger and at the same time taller and then watch out for our next episode of uh, this pediatric nursing and then the, our next episode talks about the theories of growth and development so watch out for that but before this video ends let's actually identify if we can answer the following questions perfectly with a 5 over 5 score let's begin <laughs> answer immediately this question when planning nursing care the nurse needs to remember that energy expenditure and nutrient requirements are higher during the a first year of life b early adult years c middle adult years or d end of life cycle so as we mentioned earlier that the rapid growth and development occurs in the first year of life or 
the infancy period and at the same time in the adolescent period. So it was mentioned that in this question it talked about adolescence. So therefore our answer here is letter A, the first year of life. Question number two. Okay, so let's answer question number two. When the nurse assesses patients in the following age groups, the nurse understands that the age group that has the greatest potential to demonstrate regression when ill is a infant, B toddler, C adolescents, or D young adults. So of course, it is actually stated that when you talk about uh, regression, that's actually going back to its previous growth and development. So when you say going back to the previous growth and development, it means that uh, you have already achieved this one, and then of course the most common form of regression is bedwetting, at the same time a night bedwetting, and that's expected of a toddler, that's letter B. Let's have question number three. Question number three, the nurse identifies which word as being unrelated to principles of growth and development. So we're looking for a wrong answer here. So letter A, unpredictable, B, sequential, C, integrated, or D, complex. So when we talk about this question, we talk about the principles of growth and development. So because we're looking for a wrong answer, there's a clue there in the question, unrelated. Therefore, our answer here is letter A, unpredictable. Let's proceed now to question number four. Question number four says, a six-month-old male is at his well clinic checkup. That, sh that nurse weighs him and his mother asks if his weight is normal for his age. The nurse's best response is, A, at six months, his weight should be approximately three times his birth weight. Each child gains weight at his or her own pace. At six months, his weight should be approximately twice his birth weight. Or at six months, a child should weigh about 10 pounds more than his weight or his birth weight. So at this, uh, in this question, you're asked, you are being asked of the weight of a child child at six months and of course we mentioned earlier that at six months old that child's weight is going to be doubled and the child weights becomes tripled at the age of one year that child's weight becomes quadrupled at the age of two and two and a half years old so the best answer for this question is let us see Last question, a pediatric nurse is to perform a head to toe assessment on a toddler who is committed to hospital for nausea and vomiting. Which is most important for the nurse to consider before beginning the examination? A. Making sure the parents are present. B. Using a firm tone to settle the child down for the examination. C. Waiting until the child is ready to operate. Or D. Preparing for a physical examination based on the child's development age. So, when you talk about assessment of a child, it will be very important for us to remember that we go down at the level of the child. So, therefore, it will be very important that we are going to assess a child based on his or her developmental age.
Okay? So the best answer is letter D. Thanks. Got 5 over 5. Any question? You can find me at Facebook, Leo Sempahan Abang, Twitter, Instagram, and of course this channel, Brain Beats TV. Please don't forget to subscribe, click the not notification button in order for you to watch our next succeeding videos.